Hey everybody, welcome back to CrutchLifeAcres.com. I haven't gotten a blog post or a video up in some time. Uh, if you've been following me on Instagram, you would know I've been very busy on this deck, which I'm here to talk about today, as well as my batting cage down by the shop. Um, so anyway, what we're here to talk about today is the stripping, sanding, power washing, and restaining of this beautiful tight knot cedar deck. So let's get right into it. So when we moved in, this deck was painted, and a lot of people think if they paint their deck, they're actually decreasing the amount of maintenance they're going to have to do, and that simply is not true. Um, when you paint a deck like this, even if you use the highest quality exterior, paint, epoxy, whatever you want, after a few years of being out under the elements on a horizontal surface, rain, snow, ice, sleet, sun, that paint will eventually peel. It is the law of inevitability. So when we moved in, you could tell that the paint had already peeled in some places, and that they had kind of hastily painted a few of those spots so we could get through inspection. But my wife and I both knew that uh, soon after we moved in, we were gonna wanna do something about this deck because it truly was an eyesore. So the way that I looked at it, I kinda had um, three different options. So option number one would have been to just repaint the deck with the same product that was already on it. Option number two would have been to buy like a restore product that you see sometimes. That's kind of like painting a bed liner for a truck. It's like painting that on your deck. Really strong, tough stuff. But again, I would still argue that over the course of time it will peel. And then option number three, which I knew was the right route to go, was to get this wood exposed and then get it sanded and get it preserved the way that it was meant to be preserved. Because when you've got a beautiful tight knot cedar like this, it's really supposed to be kind of a showpiece or you know a, a visually enticing deck. And when you cover this beautiful wood with paint, you're just missing out on all that beauty. So let's get into the different processes. And first I wanna start with paint stripping. All right, so when summer hit and it started to warm up, the wife was kinda, of, you know, nagging me a little bit and saying, so when are you gonna start that deck? When are you gonna start that deck? And I said, all right, I'll get to it right away, but I need you to understand it's probably gonna take two, maybe even three months. But if you're ready, I'll go ahead and go get the stripper and I'll, I'll start this thing as soon as I can. So in early June, I went and bought my first jug of paint stripper. I did a little bit of research and I asked the people at Home Depot, and then I just looked at the packaging and all that stuff that kind of pulls you in, and I chose Ready Strip. And the directions on Ready Strip said to paint it on, wait four hours, and then strip the paint off. So the first day that I put that on, I came home on my lunch break, and I painted about 12 boards, and I said, man, I'm going to go back to work. I'll get home from work, and I'll be ready to strip this paint off. I mean, I was really excited to start this project, to just start moving down the road and make some progress. Well, I got home from work, and that ready strip had dried white on the deck, and when I tried to scrape it, nothing happened. The, the ready strip didn't come off, the paint didn't come off, it was dry, it was powdery, it was white, and it just created a whole slew of issues, and I was quite frustrated. And then I went back to Home Depot and I said, I need a little bit of advice, what's the best product for removing a tough paint on a deck? And they told me about Clean Strip. And Clean Strip comes in a very kind of post-war package, it's not fancy by any means. It stinks to high heaven, um, but it has a nice gel texture to it. And right away with the clean strip, when I started putting it on the boards, if I let it sit there for five or, se five or seven minutes, as long as we weren't in the direct sunlight, it really made that paint bubble. And those were the results that I was looking for. So this is a small jug of clean strip that I used to finish off the last couple boards, but I went through five full-size jugs. I believe that they're a gallon of this product. So. Um, it took a lot, but it's a it's a big deck and of the two strippers that I used this clean strip was the best product So the way I would do it is I would kind of paint it on with a deck brush So I got a deck brush you want to make sure you have something that can connect to a broom handle Without having the needle down. I would paint it on with the deck brush I kept the stripper in like an aluminum pan you would use for barbecuing I paint it on and then I would scrape it with my husky scraper again. This also went on a broom handle Although I found out that really the best way to do it was to be down on your hands and knees so you could really get a lot of uh, torque behind the scraper as you were scraping. So I would paint it on, scrape as much as I could, paint it on again, scrape as much as I could, and then I would actually do it a third and sometimes even a fourth time on each section of boards. Now there were a few boards that had definitely bowed in the middle, as we all know wood is not perfectly flat. And what I would do with those boards is I would just kind of turn this on an angle so I could kind of dig down in. And that's what was nice about this is it's not super sharp. So even when I was going across the grain of the wood, I wasn't ripping the grain up too much. I was really just getting the paint off. 
But what you need to understand about any project like this is that it is going to take time. You're not going to be able to just put stripper on, get it off real quickly. And I had a lot of people that had a lot of opinions on how I should get the paint off. Some people said, well, you should just belt sand it. Some people said, you should just power wash it. But, you know, I understood what the project was going to entail. The problem with belt sanding is, first of all, some of that paint was in really good shape. And having that belt sander, I would have been gouging into the wood. I don't think it would have taken the paint off that well. And I would have had to rent a tool. The problem with power washing, again, some of that paint was in really good shape. The power washer that I own, 1500 PSI, it wouldn't do anything to that paint. So that's why I chose the long road. So usually, the long road is the best road. I wasn't looking for quick results. I was looking for high quality results. And that's why I chose the route of scraping it manually. And then that moved me on to sanding. All right, so sanding really wasn't too difficult. It took a couple weeks. I went with 80 grit sandpaper because I wanted something rough enough that I could get some of the paint off and that would smooth out some of the spots that I had maybe gouged a little bit with the scraper. And again, I had a lot of people telling me you should use a belt sander, but I wanted to preserve the wood as much as I could. I didn't want to be gouging into it, so I just used a palm sander that I inherited from my father-in-law. Um, I went through probably 11 sheets of this 80 grit sandpaper, just put a square on there and kind of go in a round motion, board by board, brick by brick, got that whole thing sanded in about two weeks. Now I had a lot of sawdust on the deck and I knew the next step was to power wash the deck. So I handed that to my son. I hand the power washer to my son because he likes to power wash and it's an easy machine to run. And so basically the power washing took an hour or two and he just kind of went along every single board and got the sawdust off and you know stuff that was along the house and anything that was hanging around, cobwebs and all that. Got everything cleaned on the deck and then we let it dry for two days. And then we moved on to the most fun step of the project which was the staining all right so for the staining i did a lot of research and i was looking for somebody online to tell me exactly what product i should use for tight knot cedar and originally i was leaning towards a timber oil and then i started thinking about thompson's water seal because i hear about it on the radio a lot but when i went to home depot i asked the lady there and she said what she's heard the best reviews on is this bear waterproofing stain and sealer and i use bear paint a lot so i went with it and i've been very happy with the results uh, you may be asking, why did you use transparent? Well, I could always go darker in the future, but for this first run, I thought, let's just put a transparent sealer on here, and then if I want to go brown later or red later, I can. Um, this took just over two cans. Isn't that how it always works? I got through two cans. I had a few boards left, so I bought the third can because I can always use some stain. And then again, the other key to success on that project is the deck brush. So we bought two of these. My son Emmett was out here helping us, and we got it done in about an hour. And that's what's so interesting about painting a deck is it's like, why would you spend a few hours painting a deck knowing that years down the road you're gonna have to do a major maintenance like I've had to do here, when every couple years if you just stain it, which only takes about an hour, you can see the wood, you can preserve the wood, and you can get great results. So that's kind of the lesson learned here. This is the second house that I've moved into that had to paint a deck. The first one I used that Restore product. And as I talked about earlier, I learned a lot of lessons from that. And on this one, we went to old school, we stripped the paint, we sanded the boards, we power washed the deck, and we stained it, and we got great results. We had our first dinner out here with some family and friends last weekend, and it was so great to sit out on this deck and just enjoy the beautiful wood and know that all the work that I put in paid off in the end. So you can always email me, steve at crushlifeacres.com, if you want to talk about some projects. I hope you learned a little bit of something from this blog post and this video. This is a really big deck. Um, even if it was just half the size, it would have taken half the time and the project wouldn't have been so big. But uh, down the road, we're probably going to have to replace the railing, and that'll be another project in itself. But yeah, crushlifefakers.com, always good to see you on the website. I hope you enjoy the projects and learning how I get things done out here. And uh, what's most important, what I really want to communicate is that, you know, checking projects off the list gives you a feeling of fulfillment unlike anything else. So if your wife wants you to get something done, uh, start your to-do list. Get your to-do list going and then just chip away on things and put some sweat equity into your home. Uh, so that's a great example for the kids and it gives you a great feeling of accomplishment. So rise, shine, crush. I'll tell you about the batting cage here as soon as I can. I hope you have a great day and uh, I look forward to seeing you on the website, on Instagram, and on the blog. Thanks again. Bye.